Built by the ancestral Puebloan people, Mesa Verde was discovered accidentally by a farmer searching for his lost cow. It was constructed in a natural cave inside of a vast canyon. The name Mesa Verde refers to the green table-like surface of the surrounding cliffs. Today, Mesa Verde is a national park site. The ancestral Puebloans were an agricultural people, focusing mainly on farming and harvest over hunting and fishing like other native peoples of the time. Because of the locations, the Pueblans were thought to have been solitary and possibly nomadic, but pottery from far off locations would suggest a degree of interaction and even trade. Previous native structures would have been built with adobe brick for its durability and resilience to the elements. However, these 600 plus structures were built with sandstone, mud mortar, and timber. At this time, the use of timber would have been an innovation for these native people. Coming from the surrounding spur trees, the timber would have acted as a proper support for the natural clefts in the, cl in the cave wall. The cliff offered natural protection from the seasons, especially the hot summers and cold snowy winters. Though today, the National Park is centered mostly around Cliff Palace, the original Mesa Verde site where the native people lived was vast and spanned basically the entire canyon. Living areas were larger, but the same shape as storage rooms. The inside of these rooms were plastered and painted. These cave paintings were geometrical in form, comprising of various lines and patterns. Some represented animals and plants, while others represent this landscape and surrounding area. Cliff Palace is the largest and most intact of the Mesa Verde structures, with 150 or so rooms used for storage, living, and family gatherings or ceremonies. Despite this, most of the rooms in Cliff Palace were used for storage and ceremony. Storage areas were small and square shaped, accessible through small holes large enough to fit an arm through and grab what one would need. The circular rooms were used for ceremonies and gatherings. Units and rooms would be arranged around a kiva, or underground circular room, supported by six stone columns built into the wall and covered by a wood roof. Inside the kiva would be a hearth or fire pit with a vent nearby. Between the hearth and the pit would be a low stone wall to keep vent air from blowing the hearth fire out. Despite their ceremonial purpose, kivas were occasionally lived in. Ladders were used extensively throughout Mesa Verde to enter and exit structures at various levels. The highest structure in Mesa Verde has three levels not including the one below attached to the kiva. At Mesa Verde, a majority of water came from gathered rainwater and melted snow during the winter. These few sources seem to be the downfall of the ancestral Puebloan people. Though it is unknown what caused the ancestral Puebloans to leave Mesa Verde, the most likely reason is lack of resources. A heavy drought struck the area during this time which would have diminished resources quickly and caused internal disputes. For the Pueblans, packing up and moving seemed to be the only option. Seagram Building was designed by German architect Ludwig Mies van der Rohe. The skyscraper has a bronze facade with steel as the building's frame. Seagram Building was designed and built to be an office building for the Canadian Liquor Company by the same name. Because of prohibition at the same time, they had grown in popularity and made quite a profit. Seagram Building's original architect, Charles Luckman, was brought on because of Lever House across the street, the first modern skyscraper which in a sense is ironic, but more on that later. One day, his daughter and a studying architect, Phyllis Lambert, saw Luckman's design model 
and said it was horrible and ugly. So they went to MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art, down the street and was introduced to Van der Rohe's work by the architectural director of the museum. Before I said this was ironic, that is because Seagram building later became the standard for modern skyscrapers. Mies was born, raised, and trained in Germany. There he became head director of Bauhaus, a school that focused on blending fine arts with design until Nazis shut it down in 1933. He believed that less was more and his designs certainly show this. Seagram's form is simplistic, which is typical of modern design. The skyscraper is vertically em emphasized. On the building's exterior are seemingly endless columns of I-beams that make the building seem to reach for the sky. They also cast shadows onto the bronze windows, creating a sense of death that otherwise would not be there. Mies heavily admired classical architecture, and Seagram shows that not only in the use of bronze, a classical medium usually used for statues, but in the symmetrical de design of the building. Symmetrical designs are typical of Mies' designs. Every one of his buildings are symmetrical and evenly balanced in design. Let's look at a few. Here is the One Charles Center, an office building in Baltimore. And the SR Crown Hall, or the architecture building, to the students of Illinois Institute of Technology. Now back to Seagram. The building is 100 feet back from the street line. When asked why he chose to do this, Ludwig said this was done so the building could not overpower the racket and tennis club across the street. The building's base comprises of glass windows to allow optimal natural light, another classically influenced visual, as the base looks like a pedestal, just as the one's classical sculptures would have been placed upon and the black supports surrounding the base are lined and resemble the carved indented columns typical to Greek and Roman architecture. On both sides of the plaza are reflecting pools facing north and south. This, as well as Mies using I-beams as decoration, go against modernist practices because they are purely decorational and serve no purpose other than that. Yet, all skyscrapers from this point on will reference Seagram in some way.